What's going on, YouTube tribe and YouTube world? Welcome to Little Bit Man Gaming, bringing you a, re a review this time for episode two of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, titled "The Star Spangled Man." Um, <clears throat> I gotta do it in my tribal chief voice. <clears throat> Acknowledge me for all the for and do this. Acknowledge me by doing what the tribal chief says and do. All you have to do is hit that like, subscribe, share, and hit that notification button. Also, leave a comment down below of what you thought. I demand you leave a comment down below of what you thought of the tribal chiefs. Is one of the best episodes that the tribal chief likes, which is the Star Spangled Man of Falcon the Winter Soldier. Leave a comment down below. I demand it that you acknowledge me and do that. For those who are not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Acknowledge me as the only YouTube channel that could bring you entertainment. As the D YouTube channel, I am the hottest, newest. Yeah, I'm just playing. I ain't gonna keep doing that. But yeah, what are you waiting for? Join the channel. I am the hottest, newest gaming slash review slash reactions media with all, everything in between. On YouTube, and if you got you want you got a show you want me to react to, you got a suggestion that you want to see me do reactions and reviews to, I will do that. Just let me know in the comments down below. And um, uh, yeah, what are you ready for? Join the tribe. If you're not joining the tribe, join the tribe. Those who are join who are tribe members and new ones alike, I love you, appreciate you, thank you for giving me the opportunity to entertain you. Um, uh, yeah, but no, I'm not gonna waste any more time. Let's get into it. So, the Star Spangled Man, which is episode 2 of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. John Walker assumes his new role as Captain America. News that not well received by Sam Wilson and, and or Bucky Barnes. They, meanwhile, decide to team up against a rebel group headed by uh, the Flag Smashers. Uh, it, or, I think it says the, it's the, Flag, the rebel group is the Flag Smashers, but... Uh, Carly, yeah, Carly is a uh, Carly Morganthu. I think it's a Morgan Morgan Thalu Morganthu. It, it, I, I'm, call, I'm gonna call it Car, uh, Carly Morgan because I can I for the life of me I cannot pronounce that last part of, of her last name. I just know it's, it does says Morgan, but Carly Morgan is the leader. Uh, the Rebel Goo Flash Smashers. But let me paint the picture. But first things first, the Tribal Chief is so excited that you guys have been smashed and subscribed, but we actually passed the 350 goal. So, now, with the hat on, the Tribal Chief, before he gets in there, we got a new goal now. Now that we, we passed the 350 goal, the new goal is 450. Can we get to 450 subscribers? Come on. Let's do it. Um, but, yeah. So, I would like to address one thing. They said Bu um, Bucky and Sam decides to team up. They do. They do. But it's not It's not willingly. At least not at the beginning. And that's why I said I want to state that because technically the, the, them deciding to team up to Stop the Flash Smashers happens towards the end of the episode, but they do team up at the beginning of the episode. But it's the, the them deciding part doesn't happen at the beginning. It just it was like one one forced the other. But I'll get into how that happens. Um, yeah, so this episode picks up just like how the last episode um, the last episode uh, ended with Sam, you know, seeing that news uh, press conference. About the new Captain America, this episode picks up the same way they do it previously on, but then it picks up. The actual episode opens up with Sam this time. Sam, I mean not Sam, but Bucky. Bucky this time it opens with Bucky. You know, watching the same news conference about the new Captain America, John Walker, aka the soon to be, depending on how they take him in the MCU, the soon to be U.S. agent. Uh, but he in the comments that's his current name. But he was at one point the Cap, uh, Captain America in the comments. Um, but yeah, but in the uh, I think in the comments he ha he has more 
you know, they this is just more of a military trained guy. He do got some, you know, he's he's passed all the qualifications to be Captain America, I guess, in the in the government's eyes. But in the comic, he has more of a, a superhuman like ability, the ability like almost like he's a super soldier, but. I don't think they're going this route in the MCU. But, yeah, we end up getting to see that. We get to see, um, you know, Sam, is, uh, I mean, Bucky is not at all happy to see this new conference because he didn't even, he, you know, Sam never called Bucky or anything. He just, he had to find this out from the news conference. So he gets up. He's like Indian style watching TV, but still, which in itself paints a picture that he still He's still almost like a military person. He he can't sleep on the floor. He can't sleep on the couch or a bed. He has to sleep on the floor. He has nightmares, and he sits in front of the TV Indian style. So, but he gets up angry after that news conference to go find and confront Sam. We get to see John Walker in that football field scene where first he's in the locker room. He's basically getting ready to. Uh, he basically get ready to uh, suit up, but his sister, his girlfriend, comes in. You know, they reminisce about how he, how she came. He, I guess he was a football player in high school. How she used to sneak in there, used to, uh, to talk to him and to, and to be with him and all that type of stuff. You know, and then we get to we get to see his friend, which is like a mirror image of either not only just Bucky and Sam, but uh, Sam and Captain America themselves. And what I mean by that is that his best friend is also a black guy. So, uh, they're ba they basically uh, giving him pep talks and getting him ready because he's nervous. Cause not a, he's nervous that he's got, he's got big shoes to fill, that he's got uh, you know, he to live up to the expectation set by Steve. But he's also, um, he's also uh, basically... Wanting to be his own man, it's kind. Of, you see the struggle that he knows he they he the government wants him to be the new Captain America, but he also wants to be him. So he's struggling to be in himself to be Captain America and himself. But yeah, he goes out there. He does he does an interview, and um, I think both uh, Bucky. I think that's the interview. Actually, that's the uh, that's what uh, Bucky sees. I think that's the uh, news conference that Bucky sees. I might have got that. I might have messed that up in the beginning, but I'm pretty sure. Either way, he he found that out, and that's when he go confront Sam. Sam is uh, Sam. Ha uh, uh, Sam is also also seen that same interview, and he sees the little poster and stuff. That, and, you know, his friends, the the military guy that he worked with in the first episode. Like, I heard he's really a really nice guy. He was like, hmm. Sam is not. Sam himself is not happy that. They they went and made a new a new Captain America. I think Sam wanted them just to leave it alone because his whole thing was he didn't want to be Captain America, but I don't think he wanted anybody else to be Captain America either. I think he just wanted to wanted the character to just be with you know he wanted Captain America's status just to be retired. But you know he gets ready to go fight the Flag Smashers, which is a radical group, but somehow with super strength. And he he gets confronted by uh, Bucky, you know, for the fact that he gave up the shield. Bucky wants to know why did you give up the shield? You know, why 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 did you? Cap gave you that shield. He trusted you, and he made he named you to his replacement. And he said, you know, Buck and Sam is like basically dodging the question, sidestepping them, you know, or saying, you know, or brushing on telling him that it's none of his business. Why, why he's so angry? And then he's like, you know, then he's telling him like, look, I have something I got to deal with anyway that's bigger, bigger than this right now. And he's like, what? Could, and you know, Sam's like, what could be bigger than my best friend? Steve giving you his mantle, his legacy. What could be bigger than this right now? Then he, you know, Sam tells Bucky about the uh, Flash Smashers. You know, Bucky recognized something about their unusual strength, so he decides to tag along, or so I say, forcefully tag along, because Sam wanted to deal with it himself, and he even kept telling Bucky that he wouldn't go. He don't need his help, but Bucky ended up forcing himself. Along and then that's where we get the team. That's why I meant that, you know, this was kind of like a force team up in the beginning, anyway. So they team up. You know, they, you know, we get the whole little fun playing scene about do you have a plan? And 
you know, then, you know, he said he has a plan, he jumps out. Bucky wants the parachute to jump on, but he don't have one because they tell him they can't give him one because they're too low to the ground to where a parachute would be effective. So he just used his metal arm to slow his um, fall down, but he ended up messing himself up but just a little bit, not like a lot, just a little bit. But it was a, it was like funny enough to sound that he said he called on camera with Red Wing, with Red Wing and he tapped, you know, like Red Wing just sitting there hovering in uh, Sam's face and Sam just like, get that thing out of my face where I break it. No, but then they go to the warehouse where the Flash Smashers are. And he ha he see them t stealing supplies, loading them up into these semi trucks. And when when they do this, you know, Sam and they're both witnesses the super strength. And Sam, you know, Sam's starting to get more. I mean, Bucky's starting to get more of a good idea why they are strong. He hasn't. Ha he doesn't t say anything then, but he's he he's not surprised by the strength like he's seen it somewhere before. So Sam wants to go take him up. I mean, Bucky wants to go take him up, but Sam tells him to wait because they could. He said there's only two people. He said he said wait. I think it's more. Than, he said it's only two people. So then he used Red Wing to infrared scanner to see that it was not just two people, but it was like it was like six to seven people. And then they found out there was an eighth person inside the truck that looked like it was a uh, as the truck was as the semi trucks were pulling off. They see an eighth person who they suspect is a. Uh, there's a uh, kidnapped person. So they charge off after the truck to go save this kidnapped person. <clears throat> Sam is flying. I mean, yeah, Sam is flying. Bucky is running at superhuman speeds. And he ended up getting, um, well, not like the Flash superhuman, but you get it. Su the, uh, in the same vein as Captain America or somebody, they able to run inhuman enough to catch a car or a semi-truck. And he clenches on, unlocks the door. And finds the kidnapped person inside, which is um, Carl and uh, Carly. And Carly is, you know, she's sitting there. She's like scared. She's like, oh god, you know, she's playing. She's playing the part because she, she, you know, with Sam busting in there, she didn't know what was going on, right? She, but so she's playing the part. So he's like, don't worry, I'm here. I'm here to help you and save you. And he read, he read on the sound that he got, he's got, he made contact with the kidnapped person. But when he turns around, Carly is now, she came back from, from high end and she's smiling at him sinisterly. That's, you know, sound goes flying out the, uh, I mean, Bucky goes flying out the, um, uh, out the, um, semi truck and he, uh, he tells, uh, Sam that, you know, she's not a kidnapped person. She's in their hands and they start fighting with the flash smashers. The, uh, the Flash Smashers, this is like the scene to put, for y'all to know. If you haven't seen it, this is like the scene in the trailer where you see Sam and uh, Bucky fighting on top of the semi-trucks. And you see the uh, the girl Cardi take wet ring and break it. You know, that's that scene. So we get that scene in this episode. And, you know, Sam, you know, Sam, had, um, Sam gets scolded by Bucky during the fight for him taking his time to jump into the fight. We also get that scene when, you know, of, of coming up soon, I would get to that point. Let me just get to that point. Um, but, yeah, they fighting. They fighting. They having a hard time with the Flash Smashers. And you know, Bucky ends up getting trapped underneath the truck, which is the scene that we see in the trailers where Bucky, where Sam messes with uh, Bucky right underneath the truck and he just yells at him. Uh, but, yeah, they fighting the Flash, Flash Smashers. They getting a buzz kit and... Out of nowhere, John Walker and um, his friend, aka the new Captain America, comes out of nowhere and helps them. But them two, they slowly end up getting their butts kissed too, and the Flash Smashers end up getting away. There, and Sam even asked them at one point, "Well, how did y'all even know? How did y'all track them? And, you know, since y'all got into, how did y'all track them? How did you know they was going to be here? Because they that might help them be able to, you know, they thinking like, okay." You trap the Flash Smasher, give us that enter so we can track them too. And it was like technically we wasn't tracking, we wasn't tracking them. We tracked y'all, as in we kind of we kind of hacked Red uh, Red Ring. And you know Sam took a session that he was like you you hacked Red Ring, and he was like technically Red Ring is um, a government property. And he said you know he's like. I and I am the government, you know, I'm Captain America, and I'm part of the government, so he's basically, exert, this is the first part in the episode that he exerts his power, um, 
I'm going to tell you how he, he exerts his power even more. We see how more how much government power he actually has in uh in, a, in a coming up soon. Because we would get a scene with uh, Sam and Bucky. And Bucky reveals to Sam that he knows why they're super strong. And he tells them why they're super strong. Um, I won't spoil it for you why. But let's just say it has it goes back to... The first all Captain America movies had something to do with all, where certain serum in all the Captain America movies. In fact, that the last of it was supposed to be the last of the serum, and the people who the serum was given to was supposed to be destroyed in Captain America: The Winter Soldier and Captain America: Civil War. So a certain serum is back in play in this, uh, so which explains why the uh, Flash Smashers have you know, these enhanced strength. We also learned that the Flash Smashers, as partic uh, particularly Carla, Carly, is the leader of the Flash Smashers, and that they even stole from another uh, organization. Some of the stuff they stole, like money and equipment, they stole from another. They're not just on the run from like people like Bucky and Sam. And the, uh, and the in the government, but they also on the run from another organization who they stole stuff from. So they got everybody from uh, running after them. So they got you know they got and we found out they have human pe regular human people uh, helping them. Uh, people who they consider the flash masters of resistance. And what is the where they're resisting is the natural order of things. They don't want the world to go back to the way it was before. You know before the blip. They these the the the, the flag smashers and the people who support the flag smash flag smashers they believe the world was better during the blip. You know, do they agree with Thanos? They you know they don't agree with Thanos, but they agree they do like how the world was. They they love what it what came, became of it. They love that during the five years where everybody half of people was gone, the world was united. And now, not only the flash, we only not only the flash smashers, but we get to meet the uh, civilian people who we get to meet civilian people in particular, a particular civilian guy, you know, and his wife who helps the flash smashers because they believe they they along with another with more group of civilians believe because he said he tells them that you got supporters around the world. So he tells the flash smashers that he just, it's not just him. It's a lot of people around the world who support them. And that we find out that we find out how how deep this goes. That that maybe maybe it wasn't such a good thing that Tony and them brought people back. But then that brought the question: Did Tony just sacrifice himself and his life for nothing? If the world, if half the world still, you know, half the world is against the other half because they came back. We even have more information and dialogue about how from and thanks to John Walker, uh, how. The government fund, you know, they, you know, they, uh, they, you know, Sam and Bucky question him about the government funding because John Walker mentions it, and then they question him about it. And he mentions how because of the blip, and because of the blip, and then the Avengers bring everybody back, it caused a whole new government programs needed to be made, not just for the people who return, but for for government programs and funding for how. And, you know, for the people that was gone, like, I guess for situations like how they was gone for five years and then came back. Then for the, there are separate fundings for the people who came back. Uh, funding for the deal with the fact that people was gone and came back. It's like he said something about displace, displacement uh, fundings and stuff like that. So we get, we get more information about how this world is trying to cope and deal with on a government standpoint with the, the returned people. No, there's new insurance policies, new government funding for everything now. Um, Sam, you know, they, they, John Walker wants Sam and Bucky to work with him. And Sam and Bucky basically don't want to work with him. They don't like him because they didn't want a new Captain America. They just wanted to retire Captain America altogether. Um, but they, one of the reasons why they don't work with him because they hear it. They, even though he's trying to sugarcoat it, they try to use it as a PR firm, a PR like agenda to get Sam and Bucky to work with him because it would look good to see to see them. He he, he even insults Sam by saying, you know, you could be my my like my sidekick, my uh my uh you could be you could be my sidekick just like you was for uh for Captain America. And he said, you see, he's uh, Sam was like, you see. 
That last line right there, you was doing good to that last line right there. He's like, and he, you know, he lead, Bucky leads first, and then I think Bucky, the, the other guy that's with uh, John Walker, said something to Bucky. I forgot what he said, but he said something to Bucky that made him want to get out the car. And then when uh, John Walker says that to Sam, Sam was like, yep, you know what? That last line right there. And he gets out the car. So we get more information. Bucky, he, Buck, uh, Bucky tells Sam about why, uh, about that uh, Captain wasn't the only super soldier, super soldier. And so he needs to meet. We go meet this guy who was, a, who was an African-American guy. And he, it turns out he was a super soldier too, just like Cap. And uh, we even see a little display of his strength. Uh, Sam, on he he doesn't. We found that Sam and this guy is not even friends. Sam, this guy was sent to stop Sam, and he whooped Sam's ass. But Sam tried to explain to him that he's not that person anymore. That he's like, you can't just wake up one day and decide you're not that person or you're a different person. The world doesn't work like that. But then he said, then he changed his mind. He said, maybe for people like you, it does. So, okay, and I think he was re insult, referring to the fact that Sam still looked the same, like how he did back in the back in the day. Because you know, Sam should be an old man, just like him and Captain America. But Sam still looks young because he, you know, he's he didn't do what Buck, uh, Captain America did. He's not old. Um, so yeah, they uh, Sam after they uh, you know they caused the man to go into a furious rage by revealing you know there was more people like him. You know, he breaks down telling like, people like you, your people is the people who torture me, blah, blah, blah. So he tells them to get out. And then it goes into this. This is where Sam being black comes into the play. Because then some police show up uh, while Sam and, uh, and Bucky was arguing about the fact about why they nobody knew the cat. The, the cat know why didn't nobody know about that. It was another super soldier, a black super soldier. And... Bucky, you know, doing the argument and them trying to calm the police down, but the police act the racial profile because they not after Bucky, they after Sam. You know, they think Sam is harassing Bucky, and they was like, "No, Sam's like, you know who this guy is," and they was like, "Oh God, I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson," because the other police officer had to come tell the his partner who was harassing Sam that this is actually Sam Wilson. So just because he's their Avenger, and you know, and Falcon, he gets a special treatment. So they end up. Uh, Sam, they end up, uh, you know, calming the police down. Sam reveals, the, um, Bucky reveals to Sam that the reason why he never said anything to uh, to him or uh, Captain America about the fact there was another super soldier was because the guy's been through enough and he figured the guy just needed to be left alone. Um, but then they arrest Sam. They're, I mean, Bucky. They arrest Bucky because Bucky missed his mandated uh, therapy session. So Bucky's in jail, but then we see his therapist, and this is where uh, this is basically leading up to the scene we get in the pre what we saw in the trailers, where she's like, "Oh, for God's sake, one of you just blink," and she uh, makes Sam she makes Sam blink. We get lead up to that, but this is how Sam gets out. Uh, Bucky gets out of jail. She, you know, Buck and Sam is greeting the uh, the therapist. She think he thinks the therapist got Bucky out of jail, but she's like, "No, it wasn't me. It was him." And we see John Walker again. John Walker was the reason why Bucky got out of jail. You know, because he said Bucky was too, uh, Bucky is too viable to have in jail. And they asked, uh, they asked John, how did you get, uh, and this is instance number two, how, how him being part of the government was able to use the government, you know, himself. But he's like, yeah, I, I'm the government, you know, I could do that. So they get into a little therapy session. You know, Sam, you know, they eventually sound, you know, confronts Buck. Um, Bucky confronts Sam about the uh, about the shield, saying that he. Why did you give it up? You know, because he was wrong about you. If he was wrong about you, then he was wrong about me. Sam said, "This is my son that you might never understand, but this is bullcrap." And they go uh, outside to talk to John Walker. They trade information, but then they tell him, "You know what? Because of what you have to go through to get to do stuff, you know, we it's best that we not work together because we could do it without having to get these rules and you know without having to give him permission." So John Walker is like, "You stay out of my way." Uh, a certain villain returns at the end, and that's it. You know, um, yeah, I give it not a big ups because it was just a that good of an episode. It was, a good episode was a nine good episode, but that's all I got. Um, Y'all could do me a favor.
the tribal chief wants you to hit this button up here for all of the reviews hit this button right here to subscribe or hit any one of these lovely videos for more of my great content to the next one peace